because you can be more intimate than just having sex with more than one person. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think like an emotional connection is uh, typically a lot more intimate than sex. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, I mean, that's kind of the way I see it. There is totally a thing as emotional cheating. If you're unhappy to where you feel like you have to go behind somebody's back, especially in a polycule or <laughs> somebody's plural back to find what you're looking for, then it's probably not you're probably not in the right situation. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. you have some self work to do, yeah. right? Because the, your partners could be offering you the avenues of communicating with them, and then you don't take it because you feel like you have to hide from past experiences or whatever so it's not always the partner's faults that you know they've put too many restrictions they've done whatever it could be a big sign that you need to do some self-reflection on why you feel like you need to do those things because someone can give you all the opportunity in the world but you have all of these unhealed things from the past maybe that are causing you to feel like you can't utilize the tools that your partners are giving you and so you go and you go behind their backs anyway so then maybe you aren't the person for your partners you know it's not always the it's not always the partner's fault for the person feeling like they have to step out Mm. i guess and a lot of people will use polyamory or opening the marriage as an excuse to partner hop Yeah, And they will, the thing about partner hopping is this, you're probably not going to find what you're looking for because if you're doing that sort of thing, chances are you don't really know what you're looking for. Right. And that's, you know, you're just seeing something new and shiny and that you think that goes, that's going to be. But um, but the thing is, that's okay. That's okay to not know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's part of life. Like, you know, it's the question gets asked to people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and go on, you know, so on. So what are you going to do when you grow up? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. I still don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. I, is this the one thing I want to do when I grow up? Would you Maybe. act your age? <laughs> Would you act your age? Uh, no, I've never been this age before. Yeah, I don't have uh, any idea. I have no idea how to, how to do that. <laughs> but you need to reevaluate uh, your your relationships if you feel like it's not, you know, you're not in the right situation. And that's where the communication comes in of, hey, look, I'm feeling a certain way about something. You know, you can probably try to work it out or you can, you know, move on. And the thing is, is that's okay. It's Mm -hmm. okay. It's okay to not be comfortable in a relationship anymore. It's okay to to feel differently about a person you used to feel good with. It's okay. And that's where, you know, people tend to step out whenever they're not happy with something in a relationship. I, Which I, is different from pursuing because you have more love to give, because that can be confused for, oh yeah, like especially the the monoga goggle wearers, mm-hmm. they can be like, well, that's you just admitted right there, you're stepping out of your relationship with this one partner because you're not finding what you want in oh, them. Oh God, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's I wanted to clarify that. Right. How many times have we been well wished of? We hope we they hope we find stability in the future or some variation of that. Like, oh, well, eventually you'll figure it out. You know, <laughs> no, we, we pretty much have. Yeah, yeah no, I got it. Figure it out. <laughs> One thing that we, we've also seen in, in Polly uh, is where they have uh, a partner and their partner has multiple partners. Like, well, they have more than one. Why can't I? Well, you can. Probably, maybe, if you just talk to your partner and see. And people do have those weirdnesses because people are multifaceted. They are, they are crazy complex. And we, as as people, we don't always make sense. Mm-hmm. So there are situations where there's a polycule, and one person has half a dozen partners, mm-hmm. and the other one has just them, and. The one with more partners would be appalled to learn that the person who's monogamous with them would want more mm-hmm. or want more, want another partner or have feelings for somebody else. And it's it's weird, it but is. it's true. It is. And it does happen, and those are, those are feelings, and those are things, and that's, that's sort of a thing that needs to be discussed, worked around, and uh, worked out. 
Yeah. And some people are perfectly happy in that situation, uh, being on the less plentiful end of the relationship scale. And some people just, uh, they'd be happy like that for a little while. Some people would be happy like that for the re- you know, for a long while, but would like to keep their options open. And some people are like, well, this will do for now, but I am probably going to meet somebody and not want to lose what I have already. The thing that we can't emphasize enough, and we've covered it so many times, is I think uh, what Jay said before was really the most pertinent thing when it comes to cheating, is that the only similarity that cheating has to polyamory is the presence of more people, more people being involved. Mm -hmm. And that's it, because the differences are so amazingly fundamental. The communication versus not communicating like specifically in trying not to communicate, so being deceptive, um, being uh, radically transparent, and all of that is a polyamorous, is a polyamorous building block. Uh, not only that, it's the expressed uh, support mm. and wishes for you, well wishes or whatever, for your partners pursuing a new romantic endeavor while still maintaining the one that you have. And that's the difference. You know, if you're stepping out, uh, chances are, you know, you know what you're doing Mm -hmm. and you know, it's not going to be supported or encouraged. And at some point you're going to think to yourself, this won't end well because it probably won't. I've never been a fan of, uh, of the, the statement. It just happened. Well, to me, I, I understand. Yeah. I understand that it can, it's just, to me, that always implies a, a massive level of lack of self-introspection. But, or but, accountability. But what if you're just walking and you're you're with a friend mm-hmm. and y'all both slip and y'all fall on top of each other and have sex? Accidentally. Like Accidentally. As you're walking yeah. down the street. Yeah, it just happens. Just happens. Things just happen. <laughs> Cause, Wait, it uh, doesn't? Yeah. Hmm. Cause the, I think we should be concerned. <laughs> has this happened before to you I, look, is this not no but you know we're we're things have happened before yeah have they not not to me do we have to have a conversation no oh okay yeah years ago i was watching a, a, a comedy it was like one of those family comedies sitcoms you know how they they go and uh the older son was about college age and he said oh he was talking to his dad, and he said, well, I, w- I kind of accidentally kissed this other person other than the person he was dating. And uh, well, and it, his dad looked at him and said, okay, how, how did all this happen? And he, the son outlined how it happened, and, and the dad said, so that's when you tripped and your lips fell on her face? It's like, how did this accidentally get there? <laughs> right. <laughs> there was no, there's no, it doesn't. To a real degree, it doesn't just happen. You have made a series of choices to get you to that point yep. and a series of deceptions to get you to that point. And mm-hmm. if you don't have the strength of will to just back up and say, you know what, there's other people involved in this. Uh, maybe you should that, talk to them about it. We're, yeah, and that's hard to, especially for a polyamorous person, even one who has kind of a pass, you might say, fishing license, hunting license, however you want to vernacularly say it, um, Hey, we're about to have sex. Hold on a second while I make a series of phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to have those conversations ahead of time. Right. right. And that's how... where communicating about what your desires are when oh, we've had mm-hmm. we've had those conversations before. Like, OK, what what is comfortable and what is not? And honestly, that'll change, too. Mm-hmm. You know, like you may feel like you're going to be completely comfortable with something. They come back and they're like, oh, I did this thing. And you really want to be happy for them. But inside you're like, oh, my God, this thing happened. I, I'm i feeling not as happy as I thought I would feel for them about yeah. it. And then you have to talk about that, too. You can feel however you want to feel. And you can take things however you take them. And sometimes you can't be prepared for how your feelings change. It is a bit of a party foul to... uh withdraw your consent after the fact Mm. because now you said hey do this and And then they do it and you well i didn't know i was going to be jealous right Mm. that's that's kind of a ouch like wait a minute this person went ahead based on your consent and wouldn't have otherwise and then you come back and there's consequences that can be kind of a party foul yeah Mm. we've experienced that and it's horrible Mm -hmm. for everybody else involved because 
if you're morally conscious whatsoever, then you you feel horrible for for this unknown infraction that you pulled because you went with well intentions. You probably came back super giddy and happy and then it's completely ripped out from under you. And it's the most horrible feeling. And it makes most every other interaction you have after that, even if the person has decided, oh, well, I'm okay with it now. It's yeah. like you can't continue with the same joy that you had because you're afraid. There's always that worry. And in fact, I would say the most toxic reaction uh, coming back from a person who suddenly finds themselves feeling differently about the situation is when they are actively and thinly veneered okay when they're acting like they're clearly not okay but they put a thin veneer of acceptance on it mm. so it's kind of one of those passive aggressive oh you're home and you're you're feeling giddy and you're feeling and your partner's there going oh okay yeah you're home okay good and hope hope it went well yeah I'm, then... I'm absolutely i'm absolutely happy about this yep yep me happy yep here we are hey want to watch tv no you probably want to watch a different show you probably want to watch a different show. <laughs> See, and, and the thing is, about an hour later, a fight breaks out because of the fact of not something else. Because of that TV show you wanted to watch, it's it's now there's a big <laughs> blow-up fight when it's the underlying thing is not the TV show. It's the fact that you went out with somebody else. When you were told that you could. Right. And the person felt jealous about it and then still, still, still wouldn't admit it. Mm-hmm after that so it's it's uh it's hard enough i mean and this feelings can change and you can be surprised at how you reacted to something and you can get spikes of jealousy at the weirdest time Pony, no. oh, yeah. Pony yeah. Emery is not immune from jealousy not at all the difference is we can talk about we it we work through it yeah i felt jealous at the weirdest times for the weirdest things and the only the only thing you can do is talk about it mm-hmm I yeah. try to figure out why. Like, like, yeah. Why Why did that, of all things, why did that make me yeah. jealous? It's not the <laughs> other things that has been happening. Uh, no, just, just that, that, you know. Oh, look, they got more room on the sink than I did. What the <laughs> fuck? Why how yeah. did that make me jealous? That's a weird thing to be jealous about, uh, especially since it's easy to fix. Hey, could I have a little bit more room on the sink for this thing? Right. Wow, that was hard. So, we're, yeah. We're shattered, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so jealousy does happen. The thing you got to do, and this this whole episode comes down to communicate with each other, because you have to, you have to, if you feel a certain way, talk about it. If you feel this, don't step out on your partner, because our partners, plural, because of the fact that you have other people's emotions tied into yours, and people will get hurt. You do not want to hurt people hmm. uh, well unless it's like into the bdsm but that's a different story so but the thing is it's like <laughs> come on it's and... also about consent right you right know? so it's all about consent now i did just it did just occur to me a possibly more toxic reaction than the passive aggressive acceptance hmm. uh, and that's the person who always has an emergency when you are out ah uh, hmm. yeah yeah. Somehow, some way, always something is happening that they need you right now while only when you are out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of actually for the person who's on the receiving end of the disapproval, it then becomes a feeling of that you cheated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you feel like you did something morally wrong that disrespected your partner. Yeah, and that, even though you had permission, right, and that hurts. That does hurt because it, of the fact that, like, hey, look, I'm an honest person, yeah. and you're telling me I'm cheating on you. I like, go what out the of my fuck? way like, to make sure your yeah. feelings are taken care of. So, I guess just do everything you can. Make sure your your lines are clear. But there will be sometimes those situations, and you just have to work through them. Yeah, and you know, envy, jealousy, and stuff like that. But whenever. If your partner goes out with somebody with your permission, it, it's it, not cheating. It's yeah. not cheating. Yeah. Okay. And even if you feel differently after, again, it's still not cheating because right. yeah. you gave your consent. Mm -hmm. And that is a big, big thing. And yeah, you may feel jealous. Like we said, there's some weird jealousies that will happen. Just we're not we're not immune. We're not perfect people. Shit happens. Mm -hmm. And you never know at what point and at what you're going to feel jealousy or uh envious about stuff but the thing is like hey 
I felt jealous that you went out and did this. Okay, I... It, 